Today I'd like to talk about this solar charging unit I set up. Uh, I kind of made it as a bit of a compromise between portability and power. Uh, it kind of loses a bit of portability and gains a bit of power. Um, so the way I set this up is I set it up in this carry case and I wanted the carry case to be you know, easy to transport, solid, rugged, um, and I wanted the uh, clear top so that uh, the unit, even when it's being transported, uh, can gather light, gather ambient light and charge the batteries. That's basically how this thing works. There's solar cells, there's some batteries, there's a charge controller, and there's an inverter in this unit. Um, so let's go ahead and open this up. And what I have here is a 10 watt uh, panel. It's about half an amp. I actually have two of these panels in here. When you bring it out, you can unfold them. It'll give you about double the power. Um, sometimes the way I like to set this up is I'll do something along the lines of that. Kind of allow for a full range of sunlight or you can take it out completely. There's lots of cable on it and set it up in whichever way you want to to get the best out of the sun. Um, okay, and of course the way I put these guys together is hockey tape. Uh, I'm Canadian so I kind of had to. I figured that was the best way to do it. Now, moving these out of the way. The way this is set up is, uh, again, uh, I have a solar charge controller. I have an inverter and I have a battery pack. Now I decided to go with a bunch of AA batteries uh, and the way that this unit works. The reason I'm using a charge controller, you don't have to use a charge controller. Um, there's a lot of advantages to using a charge controller. Uh, number one, um, it knows uh, how much power to put into the batteries, when to stop, and it also stops this from over discharging. Okay, that's pretty important. There's a temperature sensor in here which will cut it off if things get too hot. Uh, there's also, it also stops when the unit uh, is not receiving charge from the sun. Um, what can happen when you're just using a solar panel is that the batteries can actually back feed electricity back into the solar panel and you can kind of get a slow leak that way and this unit stops from doing that. Uh, it also has several lights on here. These three lights uh, tell you how much battery charge you have. So right now I'm two-thirds out of a possible full. Uh, there's a green light right here where it says light. That actually tells you that you have enough power to go ahead and uh, use a charge. And then this light right here, it's called solar, and that'll only turn on when you're, re you're receiving am enough ambient light to actually start powering the batteries. Uh, right now, of course, it's off. You need a decent amount of sunlight to start charging this thing. Um, I, when I first built this thing, I went with one of those cheap uh, DC car socket inverters. Um, it tells me, I bought it for $10 Canadian Tire. Uh, it told me that it'll do 75 watts peak and 60 watts and 5 amps on a continuous basis. Uh, they lie. It won't do anything close to that. So I went out and I bought this um, 410 watt uh, inverter. And I find that uh, this works much, much better. Uh, so for example, uh, what we can use this thing for is uh, charging cell phones, obviously. And, and once you turn the inverter on, um, for example, the inverter will have has two 120 volt outlets, and it actually also has a USB port on the underside of it, right here. I never, can never plug these in, in the first try. All right, right here. There we go. And so I can charge my cell phone, such as so. And maybe there's another cell phone I need to charge, like this iPhone I have for some reason. And so I can just plug it into the inverter. See that lights up, that's good. There we go. I had it turned off, but it's turning itself on and it's going to be charging. 
And I figure that uh, this particular unit uh, with these, uh, it has, basically it has 20 AA batteries. Oh, sorry, it has 60 AA batteries. Uh, and the way that this works is that um, this, is a t this is a 12 amp, 12 volt system, sorry. And um, in order to get voltage when you use your batteries, um, you have to wire the batteries in series until you get the, the voltage that this thing needs. So in this case, um, it's 1.2 volt double A's. And I have these, these uh, devices right here and they'll hold 10 double A's. So 10 times 1.2 volts is 12 volts. Um, I have one, two, three, four of them holding 40 batteries. And then I have these 12 volt contraptions I bought cheap from China. Uh, that are generally made for, you know, uh, cell phone or home phones and RC cars, that kind of thing. Um, the other nice thing about, about this system is that it actually has enough juice to, no problem, run a lamp. If you're somewhere where you need some light, some actual light, it'll probably run that most of the night um, or longer. Now, the only thing you have to remember, again, because I said this is a bit of a compromise, is that um, you can, this, this solar charge controller will uh, deliver maximum of 30 amps, although I wouldn't push it that hard, and I can't with this 410 watt inverter. Um, but you will be able to discharge these batteries a lot faster than you can charge them back up again. So if you decide to plug in six cell phones, two GPS units, and then turn a lamp on, just keep in mind that it might take several days of direct sunlight before you get back to uh, a decent charger where you can use it again. It's all about charge. Uh, however, I mean, if you were to take this out somewhere, say you were to set up a base camp if you're out hunting and you brought with you in your RVs or, or your ATVs or your, or your trucks um, a big 12 volt battery, uh, you could plug in the big 12 volt battery instead of and, and keep it charged instead of just using these double A's. So it's, it's entirely up to you. Um, as far as costs, uh, the biggest cost of this unit was the batteries. Um, rechargeable batteries are expensive. I did find a pretty good deal on these on Amazon um, for about two bucks a battery. Um, and they're, uh, again, 1.2 volt AA. They're rated for about uh, 2,000 milliamp hours. Which is, you know, uh, three quarters of the average smartphone, half of an average smartphone these days, I guess. Um, then the rest of the components, I bought the carry case from Canadian Tire. I am Canadian. Uh, I really like going there. Um, and uh, the battery holders, the solar charge controller, and these two stupid things I, I bought from a website called AliExpress. It's kind of like the Amazon.com of China, uh, except it takes six to eight weeks to get here. But uh, I bought the solar charge controller, cost me about 12 bucks. Um, these battery packs, each one cost about $13 a piece. The batteries are not quite as good as these ones from Amazon. They're only about 1800 milliamp hours, but they're pretty good. Um, I would stay away, I would make sure if you're gonna use these double A's, I would stay away from the 1300 milliamp hour batteries. They're really crappy batteries. The, Ever uh, Most double A's should run between 1800 and 2500 milliamp hours. Um, and that's it, I guess. Uh, when I want to pack this up, of course, try not to touch like I've been touching the, the solar cells. You don't want smudges and fingerprints on it. Pack it. You got a nice solid little carry case, ready to go. Um, should take lots of abuse, should uh, get you what you need. Uh, thanks.